Hello and welcome back to Yoga Off The Mat. In this series, we're talking about all of the elements that make up a yoga practice, going beyond just the poses that we practice on the mat. Today, we're looking at pranayama. So in the first few episodes of this series, we've been looking at the first few limbs of yoga. If you're not sure what the limbs of yoga are, go back to episode one and I've explained there for you the eight limbs of yoga, which come from this little text, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. The first two limbs being the yamas and niyamas that we looked at in episode two. Those are the moral disciplines that we try and uphold as yogis. And the third limb is the asana, the physical poses that we practice on the mat, which we looked at back in episode number three. Today, in episode four, we're gonna look at pranayama, what the purpose of this breath control is, what the word prana means in yoga, and the concept of the subtle energy. So if you've heard of the chakras, but you're not quite sure what that's all about, stay tuned and I will explain a little bit about that. So what does pranayama mean? Well, pranayama is the control or the retention of the breath. In yoga, we use the breath in various different ways to have an effect on the body, the nervous system, and the mind. You've probably noticed that whenever something happens that triggers your fight or flight response, your breath becomes short and sharp and shallow. And there are other physiological responses in the body. So for example, if you step out into a road and see that a car's coming, that fight or flight mode will kick in, adrenaline is released, the heart starts pounding really quickly, the muscles tense up, you can start to sweat, and various other things that prepare your body for a quick response. And so you will jump out of the way and you'll still have those responses just for a little while until you start to calm down and you'll move into the state of rest and digest. And so the heart rate slows down, the muscles relax, and your breathing will become longer and deeper. So ancient yogis noticed these patterns and they realized that if they could take control of the breath and choose when they wanted to slow the breath down or when they wanted to speed the breath up, then they could evoke those other physiological responses in the body by almost tricking the nervous system into going into either the fight or flight mode or the rest and digest mode. So in our yoga practice, we can use these breathing techniques to evoke those changes. If we want to create some heat in the body and get the blood pumping, we can do some breathing techniques that speed up the breath. There's a pranayama called kapalabhati, which is when we speed up the breath, we breathe really, really quickly and we do strong exhalations. So it looks a little bit like this. Let me just get in the zone so I can do it. Very strange to do it out of context but it's a slow short exhalation we just exhale 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 and the inhalation is passive and so when you do that a few times it gets you really fired up and energized and can build some heat in the body so that you can then get into your asana practice moving into the different poses but then on the flip side when we want to slow everything down to calm the mind and to let the body really deeply relax we want to slow the breath down and there are quite a few different types of pranayama that are based around slowing the breath down. We have things like Nadi Shodhana, which is alternate nostril breathing. I have a video on that, so I'll put a link to it in the description below if you're interested. But this is where we breathe in through one nostril and then out through the other. In through that one, out through the other. Then another example would be what's sometimes called square breathing or box breathing, where we count the breath in. So we'll inhale for a count of say four. We'll hold the breath in for a count of four. And then we'll exhale for a count of four and hold the breath out for a count of four. And we keep that going, creating this square or this box with the breath. These breathing exercises, these pranayamas, can be incredibly powerful when you're suffering with stress or anxiety because in the modern world we don't face many uh, near-death experiences on a daily basis. So that fight or flight instinct doesn't kick in in that sense very often. But what we do experience in this modern, fast-paced world is stress and anxiety. And just having stressful, anxious thoughts can still trigger that fight or flight response. So adrenaline kicks in, the muscles tense up, the heart beats faster, 
and the breath gets really short and sharp. But the difference there is we don't need all of this adrenaline and we don't have anywhere to put it. So that's when you can start to feel really uncomfortable, really anxious, and that's what can lead towards things like panic attacks, anxiety attacks. So if you can learn to master your breathing, when you get into situations like that, it can make a huge difference and you can learn how to take yourself from that fight or flight mode into rest and digest. So by breathing really slowly, really deeply, and doing these breathing exercises, you can let the heart rate slow down again, the muscles relax, and the mind should start to settle back down again. It's really quite amazing what we can do or how much power we can have over our bodies and our minds just by mastering the breath. Now moving on to the concept of prana. What is prana? Well, in yoga we talk about the subtle body and subtle energy moving around. And prana is that energy. Prana is your subtle life force, sometimes known as your essence or your spirit. I know that it can be a little bit difficult to grasp those concepts of subtle energy and the subtle body. The way that I try to explain it is, as an example, when you meet a new person, you can quite often sense something from them before they've even opened their mouth to start speaking. You get a certain vibe or feeling from them and you might call it their aura, what they're kind of giving off but it's not something that you can necessarily see or feel, it's not something tangible, it's something subtle. And another example would be if you are walking along and you get the feeling that there's somebody walking behind you or looking at you. Not that you've heard them or that you know that they're there, but again, it's just this subtle feeling, things that we pick up without any real explanation. And I know that some people are more sort of in tune to this than others, but that's the kind of concept that we're looking at with this when we talk about the subtle body and subtle energy. The concept of this subtle energy is not just within yoga, it goes back thousands of years and if we look at lots of different ancient traditions and civilizations, they had other ways of explaining this. As an example, if we looked to ancient Chinese traditions, they would talk about qi. And it's the same concept of moving subtle energy around and changing the way that we feel and the way that our body is. The way that prana manifests in the physical body is through the breath. So by controlling the flow of breath, we can control the movement of prana and change our energy levels, change the way that we feel, the kind of energy that we give off out into the world. And this is where the chakras come in as well. So the chakras are energy centers throughout the body that energy of prana moves through. I will talk about that in another video another time. But if you're interested in that, then just leave me a comment below and uh, I'll make sure that I answer any questions that you have. And the final question here is when should you practice pranayama? Well, you can isolate pranayama and you can do these breathing exercises when you need them. For example, if you're suffering with anxiety, feeling stressed or struggling to sleep. But in terms of getting on the yoga mat and doing your asana practice, you can integrate pranayama in the middle of your practice. You can bring some in at the beginning. Quite often you will end with some pranayama. But even if you don't do a specific pranayama exercise, just by bringing your attention to your breathing and focusing on synchronizing your breath with your movement in your asana practice, that is still practicing pranayama. I hope that's answered some of the questions that you might have had around pranayama and the breath work that we do in yoga. But if there is anything else you'd like to know, leave me a comment below. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like before it's over and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.